Hello crafty friends, welcome to the last in our Not Just Christmas in July video series. I do hope you've enjoyed the series and that it's given you lots of ideas for Christmas cards and non-Christmas cards alike. Today I'm going to recreate this card for you. This is my prototype Merry Christmas card where I use the sentiment to create a tree shape. Don't worry if Christmas in July isn't your thing, stick around to the end of the video because I will show you some other cards that I've made with this idea of making an object using your sentiment dies. The first thing I'm going to do is cut my sentiment out of gold mirror cardstock and I'm going to put on the back of the cardstock some double sided sticky tape so that when I've cut my sentiment, my sentiment will be sticky. Now I'm colouring this bit of smooth white cardstock with Evergreen Bow Distress Oxide. You don't have to ink a piece of card to back your die cut. You can use pre-coloured cardstock or patterned paper, anything you fancy anything you've got hanging around in your stash. I'm just gonna brush my paper towel over to get rid of any excess ink. Now I've got my die cut sentiment, so I can remove it from the die. The release paper has already come off and I can stick that here. And now all I'm gonna do is run around the outside with my scissors to trim these out. I'm going to arrange my sentiment on the card like this and when I did this on my trial run card it immediately said I'm a Christmas tree so that's why I put the star and the trunk on. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take a bit of my gold card and stick it on this sticks to anything double-sided foam sheet. So I'm going to use my star punch to punch out a star, funnily enough. And I'm going to cut a little trunk shape, just a squarish shape, I think. Maybe a trapezium. So we have a star that will go there and a trunk that will go there and to provide a little bit of texture behind my tree I use this double dot stencil I think it's from my favorite things it says MFT double dot on the back I got this from a charity shop and that was put there by the previous owner so I'm thinking my favorite things but I'm going to cut it out of smooth white cardstock so that can sit on there like that and that can sit on there like that and that can sit on there like that. So on my experiment card, I put a bit of green washi behind the double dot so it would peek through the little apertures, which I like. But I think on this one, I'm not gonna put anything. I'm just gonna have the white texture in the background, almost as if it's been dry embossed. So just pop a bit of tape runner along the back. Any bits that are sticking out, I can tuck in with a pair of tweezers. Ordinarily I would glue this, but my glue still hasn't arrived yet. Actually, now I think about it, I could get some match gel medium out and use that instead, because that works as a glue. But I hadn't thought of that until this very second. So that I think, if I can get this lined up, it's just gonna run down the center. And I'll trim off the overhang and I'll cut a couple of strips of this to go behind my sentiment, just a bit skinnier than the rectangles so it's hidden. So I've taken the release paper off and I'm going to get that on straight and in the middle as best I can. And I'll put the star sitting in the center above the tree. I seem to have lost my trunk, so I'm gonna cut another one. If you've got a small square punch, you could make a small square trunk. It would look quite nice. 
So there we have my prototype and my finished design. I think I prefer it without the colour behind the dots. Let me know what you think. Would you put colour behind your double dot stencil or whatever you would have there, a strip of washi or what have you? Would you put some colour there or would you leave it white like this? But what if you don't have sentiment dies like this? Well, you can still make a Christmas tree with your Merry Christmases. You could use a die like this, which cuts the Merry and the Christmas out and they're more or less rectangular, they're not too bouncy. And stick them to your card, just for speed, I'm gonna use this green cardstock. Or you could use individual letters. You could cut them out with some double-sided sticky on the back, or you can glue them down. If you've got gold stickers, you could even do it with gold stickers. To form your rectangles, you could just use a trimmer to trim out your words. If you're going for a whimsical look, you don't need to even get your rectangles completely rectangular. They could be a bit wonky. Nothing wrong with that at all. Then you can take your strip of gold words and mount them on some more gold foiled card. And you could trim them out with a trimmer or a guillotine again, or you could just use a pair of scissors. Or you might have the right size die. So I think this card blank is going to be too small for these particular words, although they look quite fun like that. You could have that like that and a little trunk. See, that looks just as effective, I think. So this Christmas here fits very nicely in this stitched banner die. So I'm gonna die cut that out. I can do the same with the Mary. Obviously it's a bit long, but I can saw that out in a tick. So all I need to do is shuffle the die along until it's in the right place. Get the teeth, the stitching teeth to lock in. Hold it with a bit of washi and then put that end in the end of my folder and run that through. Now I'm gonna use the next size banner up to cut two banners. I can put my Christmas straight on because this was the full size of the smaller banner. So let's see how that will fit on there. Yep, that goes on there like that. And the Merry goes on there like that. But now we just need to get our big die and put that in place where we want to cut. About there, we'll move that out the way. And there we have another Merry Christmas tree. I rather like the double fishtail banner on that one. Again, that could be popped up on foam tape to add a bit of dimension. So for these, I think I might go for a bit of a whimsical look. I'm just gonna kind of randomly cut. So that looks quite good. It's cone shaped now. And I can add that onto some gold card. And chop that out. I think this one would lend itself because it's a bit thinner, skinnier, would look nice portrait. You could even cut the top of the tree and put the star on it if you wanted. But there we have a few variations on this theme. Do stick around for a few more minutes because I'm going to go and make some more cards using these ideas but on non-Christmas cards. So I will be back when I've done that. So as promised, I've got a few cards for you that I made using this idea of creating an object with sentiment dies. So this is the first card and I turned my sentiment die cut into a tag. I put some twine around my card panel as if this was a present 
punched a hole in the sentiment die cut, threaded it on and stuck it down so it looks a bit like a tag. This is very clean and simple. If you wanted to jazz it up a bit, you could obviously add colour or pattern to the present or you could emboss it with an embossing folder. You could use ribbon or washi tape. You could add a bow or a knot. So you could definitely play around with this and make a bit more of it if you wanted. With this card, I decided to turn my Best Wishes sentiment die cut into a flower pot or window box type affair. So I backed it with brown card and then I die cut lots of different leafy floral die cuts out of gold foil cardstock and put them in behind so they look like they're growing out of this box. You could, if you wanted, add some detail to the paper behind, make it look a bit more wooden. You could draw on or stamp on a wood grain effect. For this card, I decided to turn my die cuts into a present. So I stacked them slightly offset for a bit of whimsy. And on the top, I used this die to create a, like a, I guess it's a rosette, is it? Some kind of ribbony thing on top. So hopefully that reads as a present. For this card, I stacked happy on top of birthday and turned it into a cake by cutting some strips of gold foil card and adding them so they look like candles. I also found this die in my stash, which uh, cuts holes in the front of a card panel. But these little bits here are teardrop shaped, raindrop shaped, flame shaped. So I cut a bit of this out of gold foil card and use those little shapes as fra frames, not frames, flames on top of my candles. So I think that reads as a cake. And we've got another cake card here. With this one, I took three happy die cuts, stacked them one on top of the other and added five candles and five flames. I'd be really interested to know if you've got any ideas for turning die cuts like this into objects like trees, presents, cakes, flower pots, etc. If you have, please do leave them in the comments and I can make some more cards along this theme and share those with everyone. And that's it. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and the whole series and it's given you lots of ideas of things to do with what you've already got in your stash, Christmas cards and non-Christmas cards alike. If it has given you some ideas, do let me know in the comments. Please leave a thumbs up because it helps my videos reach a wider audience. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.